Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. However, this tutorial technically applies to most applications. However, in particular, we are looking at Final Cut Pro 10. And today we are taking a look at letterboxing. Now, don't switch off because just because you don't know what letterboxing is. Um, but I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, letterboxing is just the means of having black bars um, as if to look through a letterbox. Um, to recreate a different aspect ratio. Um, now, what do I mean by this? Basically, you can see this is some widescreen footage. Um, it's quite low res, that's of me looking evil. Um, and you can see we've got a rough aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Um, you may have seen this number quite a lot. It basically indicates that um, for every 16 um, let's say centimeters across it's going to be nine centimeters down that is the relationship between the length up and the length across um, x and y however film has a very different aspect ratio um, most commonly known as anamorphic widescreen um, if i just go into quick time here you can see i've got two videos this is a film aspect ratio video and this is a traditional 16 by 9 and you can notice that it's considerably thinner in fact if we line it up uh, like that you can see it's much much shorter and that's because the ratio um, there's there's a few different ones and I can't tell you off the top of my head um, it's almost um, two across and one down however it's more likely I think it's 1.85 or 2.1 around there basically it's 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 called anamorphic. There's there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, however, you can see that. But if I scrub into my video, I've actually got something called letterboxing. If I just scrub into some video, you can see I've got some black bars across the top and the bottom. And now, if we line this up, you can see that it almost matches. And this gives your video an actual film aspect ratio, um, but still rendered in the 169 format. So, this means you can still upload it to YouTube, even though YouTube, I believe, accepts um, anamorphic ratio. Um, but you've actually given yourself a true um, aspect ratio. And when you export it for DVD, it's going to be film ratio. Um, because this is how videos are rendered for DVD uh, with black bars um, and I'm just going to go over how you can achieve the letterboxing inside of Final Cut Pro 10 um, there's actually a built-in plugin for it however there are some problems you are going to face with that plugin um, so let's go ahead and get started now you know what we're going to try and create um, so we scrub through you can see like I said we've got 16 by 9 um, widescreen footage and if we just go over into the effects browser and type in letterboxing, you can see there is a letterbox effect. And we drag this onto our clip and now show the inspector. You can see we start to um, get a little bit of a black line appearing. Um, let's select our clip. And over here, you can see in the effects, if we just turn off the noise so that it doesn't take long to render, um, you can see the current aspect ratio is 1.85 to 1, um, which is comparable to 16, 9, um, but slightly thinner. We actually want um, 2.35 to 1, and that is our film aspect ratio that we want. And you can see now we've actually got black bars, um, and that is true film widescreen. Um, but obviously the thing to bear in mind is that when you export this it will have black bars on it but when you export to DVD um, that that's the most common reason for it um, I believe in compressor you may actually be able to crop it um, I believe you can crop it to actually have a true widescreen ratio so that when you load it into QuickTime it is thin and doesn't just have black bars but for exporting to DVD this is this is what you want and now when we scrub through, you can see we've now got proper widescreen. However, if we then, let's say, add a transform effect, and if we scale this in, you can see that the black bars travel with it. But what if you want the shot to be zoomed in? Now you've lost your, black bo um, your letterboxing. Well, the solution that I've, always, that I've always used before I moved to Final Cut Pro 10 was to actually build my own letterbox um, Photoshop layer um, and I've saved it as a PNG which means it has an alpha channel which means it has transparency which means you can overlay it 
onto a clip and bam you've now got letterboxing now um, if you just give it a chance to render okay Okay, but now obviously there's some clear issues. We've um, we're missing the edges, so just apply the transformation. Um, the actual size inwards is correct, so if we just stretch it outwards. And now, really quickly, we just click that button to turn transform tools off. And now, very quickly, very efficiently, we've now got a widescreen that we can drag across all of our timeline. That's going to take a little bit of time to render, not very long and not actually as long as applying the letterbox effect which is also quite handy the other handy thing is that this is in fact a HD um, widescreen cinematic overlay um, a HD one which means you can apply it to HD projects as well and obviously we can extend it both ways um, the thing you do have to bear in mind obviously is clip connections if we were to um, let's say we moved all this chunk over here it then means that we don't um, have our cinematic overlay over these clips so just make sure you really want it to be linked to the first clip so that you can just extend it backwards rather than forwards and let's put it over here uh, now we can extend it And now we've got cinematic widescreen overlay across all of our videos in our entire sequence. The other major thing to bear in mind that you wouldn't be able to do with the letterbox effect, if we just um, close the browser, is now that it's cropped, you can see that it's actually missing off my head for the majority of the video. But with um, using the anamorphic widescreen as an overlay rather than effect means that we can actually transform our video and reposition it downwards obviously it appears my head was never actually framed in the original footage but you can see now we've got more control and you will have to do this if you are trying to get the film aspect ratio you will have to readjust clips um, but it also allows you obviously to mask stuff out um, we just find a frame you can see obviously in this clip it would be much easier um, if we just lift him up there you go now he's in frame and just go through and adjust clips like this and eventually you will get a nice aspect ratio that works with your media that doesn't look like you've literally just cropped it obviously you, what you do want to avoid doing is stretching it and um, what I mean by that is let's just recenter this image um, is actually bringing in these handles because you can see now the footage genuinely looks squashed and I look fat which isn't what you want I mean let's say you're in your own films I mean you might be heartless with your actual actors but what if you're in the film and someone's just stretched a piece of footage you're in and made you look fat it's, it's, it's not very pleasant um, so I hope I've given you some food for thought the my custom made cinematic widescreen overlay is available for download in the description so go ahead um, if you want to say thanks to Dan Allen in the credits um, let me know if you do do that I'd appreciate that maybe um, and put it in your videos let me know where i can watch your videos i'd love to see what you guys create um, either using one of my tutorials or just in general i'd love to see some of the stuff my subscribers make um, just send me links in private messages um, and i'll definitely take a look so i hope this was helpful now you know why letterboxing is done um, you also know some of the problems you're going to face the problems with the built-in um, effect the built-in widescreen effect um, and in a later tutorial, I will go over cropping videos um, so that you've genuinely got a piece of video that is true widescreen and not just letterboxed. Um, so I hope this helps. I've know I said um about 20 times in this video. In fact, if someone goes through and counts how many times I've said, I've said um, in, ex including the ones I've just said, um, oh, there's another, then I, I'd love to know how many times I say that. I, I, I think I'm just in a ummy mood, maybe. Um, 
rate, comment, subscribe. You can't rate anymore, but you can like it. And you can tell your friends that they might like it. And maybe they will. Maybe they'll subscribe too. And then I'll have so many subscribers, I can... I, I don't know. Really?